Hello everyone, how are you today? Welcome to the YouTube channel Plantastic. Today, we are going to talk about the Kellogg's culture part 2, which is the suspension culture. Suspension culture is also known as the single cells culture. It uses the pieces of established undifferentiated or fibre callus that are transferred to the liquid medium in a flask or other suitable vials. The medium is continuously agitated at around 30 to 100 rpm by fixing on a gyratory orbital shaker. It is a significant method for the mass production of cells. The mechanisms of suspension culture are the agitation of the medium exerts a mild pressure on the tissue, breaking it into smaller cells aggregates and single cells. It maintains uniform distribution of cells and cell clumps in the medium. It helps gaseous exchange between the culture medium and the air inside the culture vial, which we refer as the aeration of the cells. Alright, what are the starting materials for suspension culture? We can use fiber cells with the cell density 5 times 10 power of 4 cells per milliliter or higher. We need the actively growing and typically synchronized with the respect to cell division cycle. The liquid medium whereby the agar is omitted. We need to add different plant growth regulators such as osin or cytokine, nutrients and precursor ratio. The advantages of suspension culture are it gives much higher rate of cell division than may be exhibited by the cells in suspension cultures than in callus culture on agar medium, which means that the cell division rate in liquid culture is much higher than that of agar medium. The cells in suspension culture can form embryos, which are known as the somatic embryos, through somatic embryogenesis, which is then multiplied or induced into the plantlets via morphogenesis. On the other hand, the disadvantages are the ideal suspensions should consist of single cell, which is very difficult to achieve. Therefore, most of the time it consists of small cell aggregates, which is the clumps of the cells. The cell doubling time in suspension varies with the system and also the period. There are a few types of cell suspension culture. First, single cell culture, batch culture, continuous culture which can be classified into closed and open, synchronous culture. First, the single cell culture. It is mechanical isolation which tailing the leaf to expose the mesophyll cells followed by scrapping the cells with a fine scalpel. Followed by the enzymatic isolation in which the degradation of the middle lamina is occurred to release the cells using macerozyme incorporated with osmoprotectin which is the mannitol. There are a few protocols for single cell culture which are filter paper rough nurse technique, microchamber technique, Bergman cell plating technique and micro drop method. Alright, for the batch culture, the cultures are continuously propagated by routinely taking a small aliquot of the suspension and transferring it to a fresh medium, which is about five times dilution. You will exhibit the sigmoid pattern of growth with five phases, which are leg phase, short exponential phase, linear growth phase, deceleration phase and stationary phase. This is the sigmoid callus growth model curve, whereby for the first leg phase, the cells are prepared to divide, followed by short exponential phase, in which the rate of division is the highest, linear growth phase, whereby the cell division starts to slow down and cell expansion increases. The fourth phase will be deceleration phase whereby both cell division and expansion are declined. Lastly, will be ended up with the stationary phase in which the number and the size of the cells remain constant. This is the detailed phases of the suspension culture. For batch culture, the callus can be maintained continuously in exponential phase by frequent subculture which is about every 2-3 to three days. Addition of conditioned medium, the used medium which the callus culture had been grown before, reduces the lag phase dramatically.
Therefore, it is not a suitable system to study the cell growth and the metabolism due to the constant change in the pattern of the cell growth and metabolism, and also the composition of the neutral medium as well as the consequent absence of steady state of the growth are inherent drawbacks of the batch culture. Therefore, we have the continuous culture, which is the better approach as compared to the batch culture. It is periodic draining out the used medium and addition of fresh medium. For example, we take out the callus or we filtrate the callus. We put the callus into the new medium. So for the new culture, there is no used medium inside of it. This is to ensure the maintenance of the suspension are under steady state of the growth for long periods. The cultures are known as a continuous suspension culture. It is suitable for mass scale cell culture with bioreactor. These continuous cultures are widely used in the research and commercial. There are two types of these continuous cultures, which are the closed and open continuous cultures. For the closed continuous cultures, they have the spatial equipment whereby the addition of flesh medium is balanced by outflow of the old medium. The cells from the outflowing medium are mechanically separated and added back into the culture. The cell biomass continues to increase with edge of the culture. For the open continuous culture, the addition of fresh medium is balanced by the harvest of an equal volume of medium, which including the cells that maintaining indefinitely a constant submaximal growth rate which can be further split into two types. First, chemostat. The steady state of the cell growth is maintained by the constant inflow of fresh medium in which the concentration of chosen nutrients is adjusted to adjust the growth rate of the cells to study the effect of nutrients on metabolism and cell growth. Another one will be turbidostat whereby the inflow of fresh media is controlled by an increase in the turbidity of the cultures due to the self-growth. A desired biomass density is maintained by flushing out the cells. The last one is synchronous culture. It is done by the starvation or inhibition. The cells are starved of the nutrient, such as the phosphate or nitrogen, or hormonal factors that are required for cell division in G1 or G2 phase. The cells are then transferred to the medium containing the essential elements which will then enter the division synchronously. The synchronization can be achieved by using the inhibitors of DNA synthesis such as 5-aminouracil, FUDR, hydroxyl and thymidine. Alright, how do we determine the growth in the suspension culture? First, we can use the cell counting. Treating with the chromic acid 5 to 8% or pectinase at 0.25%. The second method is use the PEC cell volume PCV, whereby a non volume of uniformly dispersed suspension is transferred to 15 ml graduated centrifuge tube and spun at 200 times gram for 5 minutes. This PCV is expressed as ml pellet per ml culture. The method is very common which is the cell fresh weight. It is commonly done by wetting the callus after washing the cells with distilled water to remove the medium, draining under the vacuum or dry by using the filter paper to obtain the net fresh weight of the callus. Following we can use the dry wet callus whereby the callus is dry for 12 hours at 60 degrees Celsius for example until the constant weight is obtained. The cell weight is expressed as the per culture or per 10 power to 6 cells. The last method is the non evasive method in which we tilt the conical flask at 30 or 60 degree but you make sure to standardize the angle every time when you take the reading for 5 minutes. After that, you measure the height of the sediment with a ruler. The change in the height of the sediment with the edge would represent the change in the fresh weight of the cells. Alright, after we have done the suspension for a long period, how do we know whether the cells are still alive? Therefore, there are some viability tests for cultured cells. First, we can use the phase contrast microscopy, whereby the cytoplasmic streaming and presence of healthy nucleus will be observed. 
or we can use the tetrazolium test in which the respiratory efficiency of cells is measured by the reduction of 2, 3, 5 triphenyl tetrazolium chloride TTC to the red dye formazone measured through the spectral photometer. Or we can use the fluorescein dicetate FDA test. The living cells will give the fluorescence green under UV. The last test is we can use the Evans Blue Staining, which is used as the complementary to FDA. The damaged cells will take up the stain, but the viable cell will exclude it. For the further improvements in cell suspension, we can use the elicitation, whereby the elicitors such as precursor and plant growth regulator will be used for the extraction of medicinal compounds, bioreactor or Temporary Immersion System, TIS. Alright, our discussion will end here. Don't forget to subscribe, share and hit up the notification button for subsequent videos on plant science. You may also find me at the LinkedIn profile for the connection. This is not a sponsored video and I would like to share with every one of you the reference I used in this video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.